Hey everybody, Jared here from Three Sprockets. Uh, today I'm going to be taking you through the new triggers, events, and actions system that we've been working on for Fight the Dragon 4.6. Uh, so to start with, we're just going to make a really uh, kind of complex scenario just to show off what the tool can do. So to start with, I'm just going to figure out what I'm going to put in my level. I'm going to start with an NPC, and I'm going to pick a visual variety, yep, that looks okay, and put him there, or her, uh, I'm going to place some traps, just some fire traps in there, and I'm going to place, yeah, a rat, they're pretty popular, that'll do. So to start with, I'm going to place a trigger, and I'm going... Now you've seen these triggers before, um, you can use them at the moment for time of day and changing the uh, visual effect of the adventure, but I'm just going to increase the width and the depth of it to cover the spawn point. So you see this, the character spawns in the middle of the spawn point, so they'll be covered by that trigger. And I'm going to go to this tab called Events. So you can see I've got two events on this object. I've got Enter Trigger and Exit Trigger and I've got zero actions for each one. So to start with, I'm just going to go to Enter Trigger, and this is the Event Picker. So this shows me... This, this is a tool that lets you set up links between events and actions. So I, my current event is on Trigger Enter, and I can see the available receivers on the left. So we've got a filter set up here, so right now it's set to Enemy, so it's picking up the rat that I just placed but I can cycle it to an NPC, so it'll pick up the NPC I just placed. And I can cycle it to select traps. So what I'm going to do is select the fire, the fire plates that I just placed, and you'll see it moves my camera. And I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to make it fire only once. So if the player walks back into the trigger, it won't re-trigger this event. So once I'm happy with that, I can just press Add to List. And you see it's built a connection, and it's moved it onto the right. So these are the attached receivers. So this is the all of the receivers that will receive an event when this event fires, this on trigger enter. So obviously in a big adventure you're gonna have a lot of items. So in case the this list gets a bit too big, what you can do is click find item in scene. And you'll see you get these little pink floating boxes. So the rotating ones are ones that I haven't connected to. You can see the fire plate that I just connected is a small box rotating slowly, so I can't connect to that again. Uh, but I can connect to this one, just click it, and it'll automatically select it for me. So I'm going to tell it to turn on as well, and I'll add the third one as well. So when a character walks into this trigger, it will tell these three fire plates to turn on. So let's just give that a try now, make sure it's working. And we're in. Cool. So they'll just stay on indefinitely um, until they receive an event to turn them off. So that's what we'll do right now. So one cool event that we've exposed is a NPC event called Unfinished Dialogue. And this event will get called when the NPC reaches the final stage of their dialogue. So if you have a five stage bit of text, the events will fire on the fifth stage. So I'm just going to give them a bit of dialogue here. Um, I mean, it's not Oscar winning dialogue, but it'll do. Um, good luck. Cool. So it's now got two stages of dialogue, and I'm going to click on Finish Dialogue. And what I'm going to do is turn off the fire plates, and I'll just quickly use the list. The list is pretty handy when you don't have a lot of things in the world. Um, when you've got a pretty big level, the find item scene, the find item tool can be a bit more handy. And what I'm going to do is uh, actually, yep, nope, that'll do. So I'll just make sure that works. So you see, they turn on does the first stage of dialogue, and then on the second stage of dialogue, it turns them off. Actually, So you'll see if when I run in here, this rat is already here, 
But it could be cool if the rat spawns when I walk into the room. It could be used to... you could use it in your adventures to make a bit of a surprise ambush mechanic. Um, so what I'm going to do is place a trigger on the other side of the fire, fire plates. And I'm going to hook up the event trigger to the enemy. So I'll pick enemy in the scene filter, click rat, and I'll tell it to spawn. We also have an event called attack player, so if the rat's already spawned, that event will make the rat obviously attack the player. Um, so I'm just going to go fires once and add it to the list. But I'm also going to turn the fire plates back on. So when the player walks into this trigger, it will spawn the rat and it will turn the fire on behind them. And we'll just make sure that works. Talk to the NPC. Fire plates turn off. They come in here, the fire turns back on, and the rat's alive. Cool. So now I want to be able to get back out of the combat area. So to do that, I'm going to select the rat. And the rat also has an event on killed. So this event will get fired whenever this enemy gets killed, obviously. So I'm going to tell it to turn off the fire plates again. So that when it dies, it turns off the fire plates. But what I'm also going to do is place another NPC. I'm going to make this NPC the same visual variety as the first NPC. I'm going to give it a bit of dialogue. And what I'm going to do now is make my first trigger, uh, turn off this NPC, so we can now hide and show NPCs based on events. So I'm going to tell it to hide the NPC. And in the on killed event, on the rat, I'm going to tell it to turn off the first NPC and turn on the second NPC. So when I kill the rat, it should turn the fire traps back off again. It'll turn off this NPC and it'll turn on that NPC. So it'll look as if it's the same NPC. We talk, the fire turns off. Over here, the fire turns back on, the rat spawns. We kill the rat. Turns off, and we've got another NPC there. So this is just a very early first pass of the event system. Um, there's a lot of extra functionality that we want to load into it, and we've, we're pretty excited to see what you will make with it. Uh, so just so you know, we've also, in case you still want to access the time of day on the triggers, that's just moved to the events tab inside here. So all of that's still there, that, that hasn't changed with this event stuff. Okay, and that just about covers it. Thanks very much.